Lisa, Facebook Live. Today it's April 30th and we're talking all about Bernina Stitch Regulator, BSR. I'm your fearless host, Adrian. I'm an educator at Bernina Canada and it's my pleasure to be with you again. We're here again in my sewing hub and we have Sarah, she's waving hi, um, as the camera person. So we're well equipped today and we're ready to talk to you about BSR. So what the heck is a BSR anyway? So BSR stands for Bernina Stitch Regulator, and we are the only company that has a regulator in this particular configuration in, in a foot and accessory that goes right around the needle. And it's really easy to use, it's not cumbersome, it's small and accurate, and that's why I love Bernina Stitch Regulator. It's a magic accessory that reads the fabric and speeds up the, or slows down the speed of your needle accordingly to keep your stitches nice and even, particularly in free motion quilting and in thread painting. So everybody can use a little bit of help and it sure makes my quilting look really great. Many Berninas come with a Bernina stitch regulator and some are BSR compatible. I'm thinking like the 480 that I'm using today, it doesn't come with a Bernina stitch regulator but it is compatible and you can add it later. You can check the Bernina Accessories Guide um, and check compatibility. We talked about the guide last week with our feet and accessories lecture. And uh, you could just call your Bernina dealer and ask them if your machine is compatible. All right. And this was first introduced in um, 2004 with the Bernina Artista 440. And since then, the Bernina Stitch Regulator has become synonymous with great quality quilting and creative stitching. If you love Bernina Stitch Regulator, you're gonna love our long arm machines because they have two Bernina Stitch Regulators built into the base of the machine. So whether you already have a BSR and you love it, you have a BSR and you're ready to fall in love, or if you're just BSR curious, you've come to the right place, let me show you why it's so exciting um, and why I love it so, so much. All right, we're gonna move over to the sewing machine. I'll show you the BSR. So your BSR probably comes in a tin like this, or mine from Gladys comes in an old tin like that. And inside you'll find a styrofoam insert, and you've got a few pieces in here. This is the stitch regulator itself, and you've got a couple of extra soles. I'm gonna take everything out so you can see it even a little bit better. All right, so you've got the, the extra soles, the Bernina stitch regulator, and it has one sole already attached to it right there. Um, it's very easy to change these, these soles. You just press the little buttons, the white buttons on the side. You can see the white buttons here. And if you press on both sides, you can just remove it. Of course, I'm sitting awkwardly at my sewing machine, so I can't remove it. There we go. It's very easy. And then to put the next one on, you just slide it on and it'll click on easily. Oh, see, it worked for me this time. I know what I'm doing. There you go. So very easy to interchange the feet. This is a great one for beginners, the circular one. I really like that. It supports the fabric and doesn't allow for a lot of fabric flagging. This one, the echo foot, it's really great. It's got some plastic markings on there. You can see, you can echo around existing shapes or existing quilting, really handy. It also has kind of this saucer shape, so it quilts nicely over lumpy, bumpy quilts. You wouldn't know anything about that. But once I made a memory quilt out of wool socks and a silk shirt and um, Hawaiian shirts, so it was all different substrates and it was kind of lumpy and bumpy. So this kind of goes right over it. So try that one out too. And if you like um, a foot with a little bit more visibility, this sole is great. It's got a little cutout so you can see um, your stitching as you go along. So those are the three soles. I encourage you to try them all out and see how they work for you. Today we're going to um, work with the closed circle because it's my favorite and I get to pick. Hang on. I'm going to put everything back in the container. This is really important. I don't want to forget to tell you this. When you're not using your Bernina stitch regulator, put it all back in the foam. Don't leave it on your desk because you might move your quilt and it might take it off onto the floor and you might crack your BSR. Ask me how I know, I'm gonna put it aside. All right. So we're gonna look at the screen now. 
When you plug in your Bernina stitch regulator at the back of your machine, it will immediately take you to Bernina stitch regulator mode. You can tell because it says BSR at the bottom. Easy. And you have a couple of options. You have option one and option two. And people, and you have a couple of stitches you can choose from, st straight stitch or zigzag. I would recommend starting with straight stitch. So we'll do that today and I'll show you zigzag as well. So the two modes are mode one and mode two, and sometimes it's hard to remember what each mode does. So mode one, I always remember one is ready to run. And it kind of has this cruising speed. And as soon as I hit the needle, you're gonna see this. Um, it starts a, a moving already. And number two waits for you. So it waits and uh, won't start moving until you move the fabric. Remember, it's gonna read the fabric with the little um, window on the bottom of it. All right, so we're gonna go, we're ready to stitch. I'm going to change the stitch length first. Um, see how it says 2.0? I find that a little bit small for what we're gonna do today. So I'm just gonna move it up to 2.3 to 2.5. Somewhere in there is really nice. And we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. All right. So Hamish is ready to go. He's got some pretty thread on and he's gonna sew some beautiful stitches for me. Um, what I recommend is that you first bring up your bottom thread. You could just do needle down, needle up. Oops, I'm gonna go right in front of the camera, I'm sure. And just pull up your bottom thread and then do a couple stitches right in place. All right, now it's locked in there. And the other thing I want to remind you is with your stitch regulator, you can use the start stop button or the foot control. I'm gonna be using the foot control, but some people find it really more comfortable to use the start stop button. Remember that the foot control is really an on off switch. It doesn't matter how hard you press on your presser on your foot on foot control on the floor. That isn't what controls the speed of the stitches. It's your hands that control the speed of the stitches. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get Hamish started. I think a thread popped out there. There we go. All right, so he's in this cruising speed. And as I go slow, there's some stitches. If I go a bit faster, there's more stitches. All right. But as you can see, in the, the result is that the stitches are all very even in length. And that's what's so hard to accomplish with free motion quilting. The feed dogs are down and they're not pulling the fabric evenly for you. I'm the feed dogs. I'm being the feed dogs. I'm moving the fabric. So again, I'm gonna show you, as soon as I'm gonna press on my foot control, I'm gonna do that right now. See, it's in its cruising mode. The red light is on. I know BSR is working. And I can just go ahead and do my shapes. And it keeps the stitches really even for me, even if I'm not super duper even. And when I stop, I suggest stopping with the needle down. It'll hold my work if I need to pivot. Now, notice that I didn't really turn my work. I just let it go under the needle. Really interesting and different way of quilting that it is with our feed dogs where we have to position the fabric exactly under the feed dogs. So I hope you don't get caught up in that. Susan says that the BSR is the reason she got her 440 and uh, she's absolutely right. Uh, she did the right thing. Uh, the BSR makes all the difference in quilting. It really, really does. And I see Helen and Christine and my sewing room is there and so is Hetty. Hey Hetty, hey Patty, good to see you guys. All right. So that's BSR-1, you get the idea. BSR-1 has got that cr cruise control and it's ready to go. I'm gonna switch over to BSR-2. Any more questions? I don't think so. Okay, I'm gonna switch to BSR-2. On the screen, you didn't need to see it. There it is. Now BSR-2 waits for you. So the better way to start BSR-2 is with the needle up. So let's start with the needle up. And now I'm ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna press on my presser foot. I'm holding it down and the red light is on and nothing is happening. Why? Because this is BSR2, it's waiting for you, which is me in this case. If I start to move, it'll start to make stitches. If I stop, 
it will stop. I can reposition my hands and then it'll continue along as I move. Really great. I can stop, I can reposition, I can reposition the quilt a bit and off I go. I could do this all day. Oh wait, I do. I do get to do this all day. Can make some little vines. Okay. Little curly cues. Does anybody have a favorite? Do they like mode one over mode two? I'm gonna do a true confession. I like mode one quite a bit more than mode two. I'm having a problem with mode two right now. I'm going to switch over to mode one. The reason I love it, I'm going to show you um, when I do a point, what happens is, first of all, I don't, sometimes with mode two, you move the fabric really quick and you get a really big starting stitch and that's not super attractive. Um, but with mode one, because it's sort of doing that cruising thing, I never really have that problem. So let me show you that. So I'm going to start and it makes a couple of stitches and off I go. When I do a point, it kind of bops in the point and I always get a really nice point, I find. So I love doing things with points because my points always come out perfectly. You don't get those little triangle points. Um, you may find that you want to use gloves when you do this because it'll help to grip the fabric. I'm using kind of a small piece today. It's only about 30 by 20. Um, but when you're doing a big quilt, you might want to use gloves. And the other thing I forgot to bring over, it looks like a pizza box. Maybe Sarah will be able to find it in the, um, by the brown box over there are the gripper rings. They work really great on these tape on this, uh, table and it weighs a lot and it holds everything down. If you can get one of these large tables for your machine to help support your work, that really works well too. Sarah, maybe I left it in the car, no worries. Anyway, if you get to see the gripper rings at your store, um, look that up or look it up online. It's a big set of rings and it clamps down on the quilt. It helps quite a bit. But yes, do try to use an extension table. It really helps to support your work. You want your whole quilt up on the table with no drag so that you can um, easily work the quilt. Okay, so we know the basics of BSR1, BSR2. You know that you can change the stitch length if you want bigger stitches or smaller stitches. If you're doing smaller motifs, you want smaller stitches. I'm gonna change it so you can see. I'm gonna go back to two, two millimeter stitches and they look really good when you just do little tiny stitches. They look a lot nicer when you go small motif, small stitches. I myself like to get my quilts done real fast, so I tend to use bigger stitches. Here's 2.7. are a bit bigger. So much fun. All right, now I promised you I would try to show you zigzag stitch. Let's check that out. You can, on the screen, you don't need to see it. You just pick the zigzag stitch and watch what happens. Look how great this looks. Let the machine go, move your quilt a little slower. So with zigzag stitch, you want to move a little slower and you want to let the stitches sort of build up. Let me show you. Oh, it looks so cool. Oh, did you hear that beep? Did you hear the beep? So why did Hamish beep at me? Hamish is my sewing machine. Hamish beeped at me because I was going a little too fast. He couldn't make perfect, perfect stitches if I went that fast. But you can see how cool the zigzag stitches look. They look really artsy and fun and sort of like calligraphy. So Megan is saying she's not really sure about the difference of the modes. Okay, I'm gonna go back to straight stitch, Megan, and I'll show you. 
Okay, we're back in straight stitch. We're in mode number one. I'm gonna press hard on my presser foot. Look what happens. I've got this kind of cruising speed. And as I speed up and slow down, if I stop moving the quilt, I still have this cruising speed. If I go to BSR two, I'm gonna press really hard on the presser foot. I know the BSR is on because the red light is on, but until I move the quilt, nothing happens. That's really the only difference is how it starts and how it stops. So BSR two waits for you. It's waiting, it's waiting. I'm gonna move now. There we go. I can reposition. It's gonna wait. I can reposition. There you go. BSR one, watch what happens when I reposition. Okay, it's going, the red light is on. It's got its cruising speed. I'm gonna stop. And I just broke my thread, but you get the idea. As soon as, uh, it's always gonna keep moving. It's always gonna stay in motion. So that's the difference between one and two. She's got it now. Thanks, Megan, that's great. And Allie remembers mode one always runs, mode two only sews when you move the quilt. So she's got it. All right, guys. So that's the basics. Now that you've hung out for all the technical work, I'm gonna give you a little trunk show. All right, I'm gonna grab my quilts and Sarah's gonna turn over here. Okay, so you can see that you can use BSR to add a lot of texture to your quilts. Um, this is Lisa the Unicorn, this is a Hartman design, and you can see all the swirls easily, easy to keep them the same size when the BSR is doing its work and keeping the stitches really nice. And in the Unicorn itself, we did kind of like a paisley design. And in the hair, we did kind of straight design to give that texture. So lots of fun you can have with BSR and uh, achieving different textures. Here's another one that's a landscape. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> Here's a landscape. And you can see how the BSR, the, the uh, artist, she used colors to kind of match each, each stone and each uh, watercolor. And it gave great texture to that. And when you're first doing BSR work, I would really recommend matching your thread to your fabric. It gives the best results. If there's any wobbles in there, well, first of all, if anybody sees those wobbles, they're not your friend anymore. And um, honestly, it just keeps them to the minimum. It gives it, it gives it a great look, just like texture, just like texture. So check out uh, trying to match your threads. Again, here's another little one. Maybe Sarah can see that. This is combined with walking foot quilting and BSR quilting. I'm just gonna flip it over. You'll be able to see it even better, Sarah. So you can see it there. On the front, it just gave texture, but here you can actually see the designs, the loop-de-loop -loop design and the little kind of paisley design. So that's really fun. Remember to combine it with different types of quilting. And of course, you can combine BSR with embroidery work. So here's a really nice, beautiful embroidery design. And then it's all quilted down to make this cute little sign. Diane made this for me. It's a cute little uh, wall hanging for Christmas. You see all the nice BSR work she did in here and it really makes the embroidery pop it. And she did a cute flange here. Yeah, looks great. Here's another one. You can combine um, BSR work with applique. So the wreath is all applique and a beautiful blanket stitch around it. And then it really pops up the applique by doing free motion BSR work all around the wreath. And then we've got these gorgeous feathers in here too. Really nice mix of traditional and sort of modern techniques all in one cute little quilt. So give that a try. The other thing I wanted to say is you can use a twin needle. You can use a twin needle with your BSR and you get this great kind of ribbon ridged effect. I don't know if anybody try, has tried that, but it gives a really, really nice effect. And you could use it on a border, you could use it on all kinds of things, but this is was gonna be a pillow right now, it's just a piece of fabric, a sample. I'm just gonna flip it over, Sarah's gonna go crazy. There you go. So when you use a twin needle, you get this really interesting zigzag effect on the back because the bobbin thread has to catch both needle threads. 
and it makes kind of a zippery look. And the way that I treat that is I just batch the back, the all the threads to the backing fabric, and then I just get this zigzaggy texture. It looks real great. And don't forget that you can combine um, BSR with felting as well. So this is a cute little felted piece, and you can see there's some straight stitch and zigzag BSR work done in this. And I think it just adds such a great element to the, um, the existing design. And this is my favorite one. Look at this gorgeous purse. I'm going to flip it over, Sarah. Here you go. See how all the felting has been done underneath? And then the artist went in and added the BSR work in black, and it just pops it right up. Looks really, really good. Yeah. And get right in there and see all the texture that made. Yeah, so I hope you'll give some of these a try. If you're looking for inspiration for designs, we've got lots of um, great designs on our Pinterest board, Bernina Canada Pinterest board. There's so many cute little videos of designs and how to do them. I do recommend getting yourself a resource book. I would grab some from your local quilt store. I've got some of my favorites here I'll share with you. Sarah's like, I didn't know this was a book report. <laughs> Amanda Murphy, she's one of my favorites. Um, this was her original quilt book, and she's got great ideas of different motifs, and then she also shows you how to incorporate them into a block. So that's a really helpful book, and she's just come out with a second book on quilting free motion ideas called Organic Shapes, Organic Free Motion Quilting. It's just as good. Call your quilt store, get that one. It's I really love it. Another amazing quilter is um, Angela Walters. Ever heard of her? Of course you have. Angela Walters is super famous, and she does a similar thing here. She shows you the motifs, and then she shows you how to incorporate them into different blocks. Um, she also is really famous for point-to-point -point quilting, so check, check out um, books by Angela Walters. I know almost every quilt store has an Angela Walters book in it. These are some old ones. Get the new ones. And I have a couple more to show you. Ooh. Leah Day, she's another one. She's a famous one. She did um, a different quilting motif for every day. And you can see that online. She's, that's still online. Or I have the book of it, and it shows each technique and how to do it and variations on it. Um, I really liked this was a very simple book, but has all kinds of great modern takes on it. So that's another one for quilting. If you're not so much into quilting, you can do thread painting with your BSR. This is a great book that I just picked up by Katie Essam, and she does all kinds of great um, free motion with uh, her quilting. And I really wanna do one of my dog. There was a great one in here of her dog. Like, check out how she does that. She takes a picture and then she makes it into a landscape. That's gonna be awesome. Can't wait to try that out with my BSR. There you go. And if you get a chance, you can use, try to find a book like this. This was Hyper Quilting. This is a gorgeous book. She goes in and does one color of quilting and then changes her thread and goes in and does another one and adds great details to her quilts. You can see how she adds more detail. So right here, she's got a pink and purple flower. I just, I love this book. This is an older book, might be hard to find, but see if your quilting buddies have it. Maybe you can borrow it, check the stores. I'm sure they still have it. But my favorite type of quilting right now is called graffiti quilting. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and saying how I get bored of doing one motif during the, through the whole quilt. Wouldn't it be great to squish them all together? And I think it was Deborah Edwards. She said, oh, you mean um, graffiti quilting where you put them all together. And so Carly Porter, she came up with this great technique where she takes all those motifs and kind of smushes them all together. And she's got a couple of books, and I think they're only available from Carly's site. It's called Carly Porter, and she is um, out of the U.S., easy to find her. Look up, just Google graffiti quilting, you'll come up with it right away. And Linda said, what was the book title for your dog? It's called Layered Stitching by Katie Essam. Try that one. And of course, you can get lots of inspiration from other books, like here's a tattoo book. You can get lots of inspiration on motifs from something like that. So just kind of push the envelope, see what else you can do. 
And I wanted to show you, you can remember to combine uh, BSR work with ruler work. That always looks really good. It kind of pops the ruler work out. You can also quilt on all kinds of fabric. This is a pleather clutch. This is a free pattern from our Burnett 70 series machines. And it gives really nice um, texture to this without too much design. So check out that free pattern. And the zigzag, that always looks really, really great. Can you see the zigzag here, the zigzag quilting? Yeah, it looks really awesome. Now, Linda, somebody had a question on, Diane had a question on what are the settings for using the twin needle? Diane, you'll use straight stitch. You can use mode one or mode two. Um, stitch length about 2.5 and you can use a twin needle. I usually use a 2.5 twin needle to a four maximum. I found that three looked really, really good. 2.5 and three looked really good. I hope you give it a try, Diane. It sure is fun. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I had to say today. Nobody asked me, these videos will be recorded, it will be on YouTube, and it will be also archived onto Facebook, so you'll be able to review it and catch all the, the book titles in case I went too quickly. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that you guys came to learn more about BSR. I hope you'll try it out and find out why it's so special and so unique to the Bernina family of products. Have a great day sewing, sew something great, and look for the next contest for the Big Book of Feet. That contest will be released tomorrow. See you then. Bye.